For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. 56 years ago, India and Pakistan were involved in a war that stretched from Jammu and Kashmir right down to Rajasthan. This month, in fact this week, there was a decisive battle that took place in Punjab. That's the topic of this week's Simply Nitin. I'm Nitin Gokhale. Although the war had begun in mid-August 1965, uh, first in Jammu and Kashmir, in fact in the Kashmir Valley, under what was uh, Pakistan's operational plan known as Operation Gibraltar, it had moved southwards and had come into the Jammu region by end of August, early September. In fact, on 1st September 1965, the Pakistanis almost broke through India's defences in the Cham Jauriya sector and threatened to capture Akhnur Bridge, which is a vital bridge connecting Jammu region to uh, the Kashmir Valley and of course the Akhnur town. And then suddenly, for some inexplicable reason, the Pakistanis halted their advance. There is a backstory to it, of course, that the Pakistan president, Mohammad Ayub or Field Marshal Ayub, decided to change the general officer commanding the uh, 12th division which was advancing into Indian territory. Major General Akhtar Malik, who was commanding that division, was relieved of the operation uh, which was named Grand Slam. And Major General Yahya Khan, who later became infamous for losing half of Pakistan to India in 1971 and allowing creation of Bangladesh, in 1971, which is the 50th year of that event. So Major General Yahya Khan was put in charge and his 7th Division was put in charge of Operation Grand Slam and to advance into Indian territory. That 24-hour window, which slowed down Pakistan's advance and allowed India to regroup, which was actually, in the boxing terms, Indian forces were on the ropes. They were battered, they were disorganized, they were retreating. And yet, the Pakistanis halted instead of coming and capturing Akhnur Bridge. But India did not know all, all this that was happening inside Pakistan or at the highest levels of the Pakistani leadership. So to relieve pressure on Cham Jauriya, India had kept a backup plan called Operation Riddle. And the plan was to threaten Pakistan's main city, Lahore. That operation was named Operation Riddle. And it was important to uh, wait until the last moment to launch that operation because it meant if Lahore had to be threatened, which is Pakistan's main city even today, then India needed to cross the international boundary. Unlike Jammu and Kashmir, which is the line of control uh, between India and Pakistan and which is not yet fully accepted by either side, where crossing into each other's territory is not seen as declaration of full war. Crossing the IB, which is a well-settled border or the international border, uh, is seen as declaration of a full-fledged war. And yet, India took that decision to launch Operation Riddle. According to then Defence Minister Y.B. Chavant's diaries, uh, which was later converted into a book, and all other accounts of that time, it was Lal Bahadur Shastri, the then Prime Minister, who uh, gave the final permission to all the three chiefs who had walked up to uh, the Prime Minister and had said that we are under tremendous pressure in Cham Jauria. In fact, the Army Chief then, uh, the General J. N. Chaudhary, had uh, walked up to uh, the, the Defence Minister and then to the Prime Minister and said that uh, we are under pressure, we are uh, about to lose control over Jammu region and maybe even uh, the Kashmir Valley. But if we do this, that pressure will be relieved uh, in Cham Jauria if we walk into uh, the Pakistani Punjab side, which is the capital is uh, Lahore. So uh, the Prime Minister apparently said, and I have quoted in my book I wrote uh, in 2015, this book, 
uh, which was commemorating the 50 years of the 1965 war. I wrote this for Indian Army's think tank, Center for Land Warfare Studies, which details the entire background and the detailed briefing that had taken place. Uh, the Prime Minister said, then what are you waiting for? You just do whatever it uh, takes to relieve that pressure and put Pakistan on the back foot. So, on the night of 5th September, the uh, Operation Riddle was launched. The plan was to cross the Ichogil Canal, which was on the Pakistani side, but which was a formidable obstacle for any armoured movement from Indian side to get into Pakistan. So, uh, the uh, forces were uh, ordered and on 4th and 5th September, the entire state of Punjab was full of traffic, military traffic, marching towards the border. So, as I wrote in the book, and I'm now quoting from the book, throughout 4th and 5th September, thousands of vehicles, civil and military, and hundreds of trains rushed towards their destinations as per the movement plan. The entire army in the western sector or in, under western command was moving there. It is remarkable that no serious accident was recorded during this planned move of Western Command Headquarter from Shimla to Ambala and, of course, towards the uh, border with Pakistan. All that happened on uh, 4th and 5th. And then by 5th midnight, the Indian forces led by uh, the uh, 3 Jat Battalion. So the 3 Jat unit, part of the 54 Infantry Brigade, attacked Mile 14 on the Amritsar Lahore Road, managed to capture it within two hours, killing 35 Pakistanis, capturing two officers and 12 soldiers, besides seizing a considerable quantity of weapons that included two rocket launchers. Now, the forward positions on the Pakistani side were held very lightly because the Pakistanis never expected India to open this front. Because as I said, opening a front along the international border is considered declaration of a full-fledged war. And the Pakistanis, in their assessment, had thought India will never dare to do it because India had a new Prime Minister in Lal Bahadur Shastri. It was weakened because of the defeat in uh, 1962 against the Chinese. And they were trying to regroup and uh, rebalance its forces. And so they thought it'll, this will never happen. And yet, because India caught them by surprise, the uh, three-jart unit, which was at the uh, spear, which was the spearhead of the Indian advance, actually uh, crossed over into Pakistan without any opposition or with very light opposition, as I mentioned. They got into a village or a small town called Batapur. I think I've spoken about this in one of the previous episodes, that how uh, the three jat uh, unit actually went and crossed Ichogil Canal, which was a major obstacle put up by the Pakistanis, but as they went across, they came uh, across uh, very little opposition from the Pakistani side because Pakistanis had sent their soldiers on either leave or had withdrawn them into some other areas for uh, taking on the Indians in the Chamjoria sector or uh, towards the Kashmir Valley. Now, they advanced uh, through uh, the uh, Batapur area and came across no opposition. But then, Three Jat was called back because they had advanced so fast that there was no other supporting units uh, which had uh, managed to cross the Chugil Canal. They were left far behind. And then, in, in, in a war, one unit going ahead and getting separated from the main body of the attack is not good because uh, it can get isolated, it can get attacked. And it had no uh, supporting artillery fire or even tanks could not go across. So, three Jat were told to halt at Batapur and uh, to while away their time, some of the soldiers went into the Bata factory, Bata shoe factory. In fact, the town was named Batapur because there was a Bata shoe factory where uh, the uh, shoes were manufactured uh, for probably the entire subcontinent at that time. So, they started uh, you know, trying on new shoes, uh, trying to uh, understand how the factory works. There, Everybody had fled from there. So, for about four hours, Three Jat uh, soldiers were in Batapur and in the Batapur, the Bata shoe factory and elsewhere, of course. There are several photographs of that. Colonel uh, Hayde, who was the uh, uh, who was of Irish descent, 
but had continued to serve the Indian Army, was the uh, the commanding officer of uh, the uh, three jat unit. He has written in his uh, memoirs about uh, what happened there. But uh, the whole issue was that uh, the Pakistanis were caught by surprise and because India applied pressure there, the pressure in Jhamjoria and elsewhere in the Kashmir Valley was eased by the Pakistanis. And finally, the war ended uh, towards 22nd of September. Many people call this war a draw because uh, this uh, was not, there was no clear winner. But uh, I have said this in the book and I have gone uh, much against uh, the conventional wisdom to prove through statistics, through figures and through all the um, events to show that uh, it was a victory for India because uh, the Pakistanis could not achieve what they had set out to do. One, to take Kashmir by force, which they could not do. Two, uh, to uh, put India on the back foot, which they could not do. And instead, they lost more men, lost more territory and lost more tanks. In the 65 war, there was this famous uh, tank battle which took place at Khemkaran and Asal Uttar, which again is a, a matter of a separate Simply Nitin episode perhaps, where uh, Abdul Hamid got uh, the uh, Paramvir Chakra uh, in uh, Asal Uttar, in the Battle of Asal Uttar. And the tank battle was the largest tank battle post World War II. There India destroyed Pakistan's pride. The one armoured division, the newly acquired patent tanks were destroyed by India's old centurion tanks. And because of superior skills of India's Armoured Corps soldiers, Armoured Corps officers, who uh, fought very well there. So, uh, all the plans that Pakistan had actually came to a knot. And therefore, I suggest and I claim that uh, it was India's victory. It was turning the tide. India was on the back foot in the beginning. It was uh, not caught by surprise, but it was on the back foot, as I mentioned, especially in the Cham Jorya sector. Uh, if the Aksnur bridge was captured under Operation Grand Slam by Pakistan, then perhaps India would have had to uh, say goodbye to the Kashmir Valley at that point in time. That didn't happen because India opened the front in Punjab and uh, tried to get to Lahore. And mind you, the plan was not to capture Lahore. The plan was only to threaten Lahore, Lahore's existence or Lahore's um, security. Because capturing a city is easy, but defending it and then uh, continuing to secure it is a nightmare for any army. In an urban area, built up area where there's a lot of civilian population, uh, huge population and uh, the density of population is very high. It is not the army's job to defend or capture and secure those cities. Therefore, the plan under Operation Riddle was only to threaten Lahore, which India achieved and achieved its aim in easing the pressure elsewhere. That was the episode which can be termed as a turning point. In fact, uh, the whole book that I wrote in 2015 is called Turning the Tide, How India Won the War. So if you have time and if you are inclined to know more about what happened there, there are lots of details here, lots of anecdotes, first-person accounts and of course a lot of maps about the 1965 war. This is the 56th year of that war uh, and that crucial week of that war which turned the tide in India's favour. That's all I have this week. I thought I'll give you a glimpse of this because we've been talking quite a lot about China, about Afghanistan. So this is uh, something different uh, which happened more than half a century ago but still important that center of gravity for Pakistan and uh, please go and look up why it is called center of gravity in military parlance is Pakistan's Punjab province and especially Lahore. If Lahore gets threatened, then Pakistan's very existence gets questioned. And therefore, this was a very brilliant move by Indian army and Indian decision makers in uh, 1965. What will happen in the future, we don't know. Much has changed since then. But that was a brilliant tactical move which had strategic ramifications in the 1965 war. That's all I have, as I said. Do keep watching Simply Nitin and of course Strat News Global. And you know where to follow us, which YouTube channel to subscribe, Strat News Global. You have our social media handles in front of you. Do follow us there. Keep sending feedback, comments as you always do. And of course, keep subscribing 
to our YouTube channel, Strat News Global. Until the next time, it's goodbye.